into the house of the Lord. Let's all stand to our feet at this time. And why don't you greet somebody next to you and welcome them to the house of the Lord. Oh, 
Lord, for liberty. Thank you, Jesus. God, that even when the devil wants to come and entangle us again to the yoke of bondage, God, you are our freedom, so we run to you, Jesus. We run to you, Lord. We will not be ensnared by the enemy, God, but we run to you because you are freedom. Come on and shout out, I'm running to you, Jesus. I'm running to you, Jesus. I'm running, I'm running to you, Jesus. Give God some praise right now. If God has been good in your life, give him some praise. If God has changed and transformed your life, give him some praise. Give God some praise. Let's give God some praise for his grace and for his mercy. For the past three Fridays, our church, we have been having revival. We have been serving the community. We have been serving thousands and thousands and thousands. We have one more, one more night, my brothers and sisters. How many of you are willing to serve one more night, one more Friday? This Friday, by faith, like last year, we're expecting, we're expecting 2,000 people. How many of you believe we can serve 2,000 people by faith anything is possible with God our church has a lot of favor with the Modesto Police Department AJC pastor we are in their Facebook praise God can we give God some praise great things are happening here at AJC By faith, we're expecting 2,000 people. By faith, we're serving food to all 2,000 people. 
the school district is donating a hundred pizzas boxes of pizza from Little Caesars. Can we give them a big round of applause? A hundred boxes. To make sure that everyone gets fed, we need more boxes. And that is why I'm up here. By faith, I truly believe that everyone will be served. So today, when we collect our offering, we did hand out, hand out a a special um, a special form or envelope to request if you can to make a six dollar donation a six dollar donation will buy one box of pizza right now we're short by 30 boxes brothers and sisters I have a lot of faith in God and I know you have a lot of faith in God and I know that today we will collect enough to get 30 boxes. How many of you believe what I'm saying? Never doubt my God. Also, this Thursday is our last Friday. My little truck. Bless my little truck. My little truck wants to retire. <laughs> but one more Friday, Brother Israel. There's so many people here to thank. That if I were to stand here and thank each and every one of you, I would take hours. But God bless each and every one of you. From the parking lot to the snow cone, serving the food, to setting up. See, we all play an important role here. It doesn't matter what position we're in. What matters most is the fact that we're giving everything to God. Can we give God all the honor and all the glory? This is what it's all about. So my friends, if you don't have $6, we'll take a dollar, we'll take $2, we'll take a quarter, whatever, whatever you have. And if you're not able to, that's okay. Pray for us. So with that, I encourage you to please give humbly, help us Thursday. Anybody wants to help out, please come at 6.30. We have a lot of work. Our last Friday family night, and Pastor Ben, we're going out in a big bang. We're going to give this community the best. We're going to give the kids the best because they deserve the best. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Can you turn to the person that uh, looks a little bit better than you do today and welcome them to AJC? Now, can you turn to the person that you didn't pick first and let them know that um, they look all right, too? Praise God. We got a new, we got a, uh, a, a same schedule, normal schedule this week. We want to remind you that this Wednesday um, is our last New Community Spirit Month, and it is Western Day. So grow out your mustaches, bring your cowboy hats. Cowboy boots. Um, sisters, you want to grow out your mustaches too? That's fine or right. You, you might win the Spirit Award, but remember, um, we are judging on the most spirit for each classroom. You guys have been doing a great job. Uh, we want to remind you that please um, do go to class. You know, don't, don't par just participate in dressing up, but make sure you go to class, you get fed, and you come out. We're going to have a great time for you. Amen? Uh, like Brother George was saying, uh, Friday... Come out and support AJC in the community. It's our last family fun night. Um, it's kids' day. We ask that if you can make it here on Thursday at 6.30 um, to help set up. You know, the more people that come out, um, the faster it gets done. So like Brother uh, George said, let's, let's go out with a bang. Um, August 8th and 9th is our kids' summit. Um, the Empire Strikes Out. This is for ages 5 to 13 years old. Amen. The devil don't, he don't, there's no age discrimination with the devil. He's going to attack at the earliest age possible, amen. So we need to do whatever we can um, to show this community that there is a place um, where they can come and there's a place um, for our children, amen. So ages 5 to 13, registration is $5.
Um, this Friday, we're going to be registering our neighborhood. They're going to be our special VIP guests. They're going to get in free. We're going to sign them up on Friday. The Wednesday before Kids Summit, we're going to be going door to door, and we're going to sign our children up in our neighborhood so they can come to this free event. Amen? Not only that, uh, the student ministry, they are able to sell some tacos this morning to make some extra money. Um, we were short just $50, but there's going to be a tip jar back there so we can get that $50. And with that money, we're going to purchase T-shirts for free for all of our visiting friends that come to Kids Summit. Amen? So every visitor that comes, we want to bless them with a, with a shirt. I mean, how does it feel when every time this child puts this shirt on, they're going to remember not only the experience that they had at Kids Summit, but they're going to remember that there is a church in their neighborhood, right? That amongst all the chaos, that they just felt peace here. Amen? And that there was a person that loved them, that cared for them, that took time out of their busy schedule just to think about someone that they don't even know. Amen? That sounds a lot like Jesus, right? And that's what AJC is about. Amen? So we have shirts for sale for our members. It's $10 for children. Um, adults, $12. Now, adults or youth, you bring um, a child 5 to 13 years old, you get in free. What registration takes care of is Friday night service, Saturday service, free lunch, and a concert. Amen? Where can you get that for $5? You can't even buy one of those girly, fruity Starbucks drinks, it costs more than $5, amen? So for $5, you could register a child, a friend, if you want to donate. And you know what? Here's $20. I want to register four people. Well, praise God. We're going to have a good time, amen? So if the ushers would make their way, we're going to pick up our offering. God bless you.
How many glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. There is excitement in the house. We give all the glory to God for He is the author of our life. He, he is our great and exceedingly reward. And we want to thank God for Him. We want to thank God for everybody that is here, all of our visitors. Can we give a big round of applause to all of our visitors? Amen. God bless you. Amen. Um, last week, this young man, um, we preached about change, and I thank God that he stepped out and he made a change in his life. It's good to have our new new young man here in the house of the Lord. Man, he's on fire. <laughs> Amen. God is so good. And today... Another one's going to go down in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother, our friend Robert. <laughs> Amen. Robert's a good man and he's on his journey and with the Lord. And we're so excited for what God's going to do with his family. And uh, it's just the beginning. Amen. This is a great time to be in the Lord and serve for the kingdom of God. And it's good to have everybody here today. And I'm extremely grateful to God because uh, in the midst of thousands of people on a very hot day in Sacramento, there was the religious and then it was those that came to have a kingdom of God invasion. Now I want to thank God for our choir that represented the kingdom of God. Listen, there's two types of people that are here today and that are in the world. There, there's the religious and then those that have a relationship with God. You'll you see that the people of Israel were marching with King David to Jerusalem because David want, wanted to build a place for God. And as he was marching to the city, I, I know he was thinking of, you know, what they did, what they tried to do to get the ark, and, and it was a horrible disaster, and God was so merciful, and this time that the ark is actually getting into, you know, closer to the city, and that he's going to have, you know, a place where they're going to worship God 24 hours a day, that he got so excited praising God that his garments just started falling off. You know, it kind of sounds like AJC, right? Our shoes start coming off. 
you know, the hair clippings. And then there's the religious, like his wife, who are just looking in. Mm. Those that are looking in get offended for all the other ones that say, I'm drawing closer to the kingdom of God. They get, they get offended by shouting mute. As long as you're just cute. And as long as just we stand and we're going to read the word of the the way when the Holy Ghost breaks out. And those are the ones that got all kinds of problems. Criticizing the move of God. Criticizing church folks. But I thank God there's Davids in AJC. That went up to a platform and said, if you don't want to shout, if you don't want to lift up the name of Jesus, get out of my way. God's been too good. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for Don't even look at your neighbor, but just kind of get the hint. Yeah, they're going to get offended. But this one's for Jesus. It's not about you. It's not about your religious preference. This is God has been good. I dare somebody to shout. I dare somebody to praise God. I dare somebody to demonstrate. I'm a praiser. I'm a praiser. Hallelujah. That's the difference. Everybody loves the Lord. Everybody goes to church. But when it comes with his presence, that means he's in this house and he's twirling with us. And when he twirls with us, when he's dancing with us, somebody's feet start dancing. When he starts singing over us, someone says, yeah. That's the difference. Who wants to dance in the presence of the Lord today? Because he's in this house. Amen. Listen. Our gratitude for God is so great that we're not dependent on music. I'll tell those that say, oh, they just wait for the music to praise God. I'm going to get you out of this house right now. We are not dependent on music. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, I don't need cymbals. I don't need a, a Hammond B12 or whatever it's called. All I got is that Jesus is, I dare somebody to praise God without music. shata. <laughs> My God, it's up in the balcony. It's right there in the back of this church. Hallelujah. 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 Turn to your neighbor and say, God is in the house. Amen. That's what makes the difference. Man, they went up there. It was like 180 degrees people were coming in from everywhere people were started to run hey man people were coming in they they were just rejoicing in the presence of God and I just want to thank God for our choir that lifted up the name of Jesus amen give them a big round of applause amen real quick you may be seated then we're going to get into the word of the Lord. Is Brother George Perez here? Amen. Brother George, I know he was here. Oh, oh, I can't see you in the dark. There you are. All right. Listen, I believe that our blessing is, number one, uh, with the fact that God just likes to bless his children. Amen. But number two is that he blesses those that honor and can give honor to where honor is due. And if you can learn to honor those that work and labor in the kingdom of God, God there in return blesses you with an honor's reward. I want everybody to come and give a standing ovation to Brother George Perez who has done an excellent, powerful, 
job on Friday nights. Listen, right now, God has a reward for him, for his obedience and for his work. And God says, if you would honor him, I'll get you a blessing too. You're the man. Amen. You give honor to whom honor is due, and while God is blessing them, he'll give you a little blessing too. Amen. Praise God. I thank God that I, my wife and I survived the, the crazy weather of Arizona. These last three days have been the craziest adventure of our, of our lives. Minimal sleep. Amen. I, I, I told God before the Spanish service, I said, if I could just get through the English service, I know it's not me, it's you. <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, it's caffeine can't even do the work. Amen. It's only going to be you. And, and we thank God for um, the powerful things that, that God did um, at that camp. Uh, there was this host that took care of us. And, and we started blessing them on the way back to our hotel as they were dropping us off. And I turned around and I said, because of your faithfulness, God's going to bless your daughter with salvation. I said, we're going to agree together that God would save your daughter. And, and they agreed that we weren't even down from the hill returning back to Phoenix. And she says, she, her husband calls and says, her daughter just told them that night while we were agreeing that she wanted to be baptized in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. We're talking about an adventure of a lifetime. In the Lord, how God wants us to have an adventure of a lifetime. And how many have been blessed by uh, the sermons through an adventure of a lifetime? Amen. Uh, if you weren't here last week, watch it on sound, hear it on SoundCloud, watch it on Ustream. But I believe that if you're ever going to go on a road trip, you need three important things. And we've been covering two important things um, these last couple of weeks. Number one is fuel. Everybody say need fuel. You can only go so far without fuel. And uh, fuel would represent the, the presence of God, the obedience that God wants the church to abide in. Amen. There's something about being obedient to when God asks us to do something. Number two is, everybody say, you can't get far with a flat tire. Amen. And this is where God is leading us from last week to today is that you cannot get far living a life of unforgiveness. You can't get far in your walk with God being easily offended. Amen. And, and so it's very vital that not only do we maintain a, a, a relationship in prayer, but we also do what God asks us to do. And then we do the hard things and God does the harder things. Amen. It's called change. And if you go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, uh, there, there's something that you need in your adventure in, in the Lord. How many love fruit? Amen. How, how many love when you're traveling to Los Angeles or something, you got some peaches or some apples and bananas, um, you, you know, in the igloo. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23 says, but the fruit of the spirit is love. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. Everybody say faithfulness. You're practicing that today by just being here. Amen. Faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. If you're out of prison, God's doing a work with you in this area called self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and I want you to tell them, do not rescue me. God's doing the work. Amen. Turn to somebody back and say, don't rescue me. <laughs> God is doing the work. How many want God to do a work in your life? Amen. Because when he does the work, it is going to be a powerful ending. You may be seated. Matthew chapter 6 verse 3 says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. 
he then goes on, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Uh, I, I'm a pretty young pastor, so with the help of the Lord, I'll be here a long time. Uh, and if you don't understand any of the sermons, if you never take in any of the sermons that God lays in my heart, I, I want you to write three things down that I want you to put on your refrigerator. I want you to, you know, put in your Bible. And, and, and this is just, you know, in Spanish it's called consejos. It's just three wise counsel that God would want all of us to have in our walk with God. Number one is he wants us to be fruitful. Amen. How do you know that God wants us to be fruitful? Amen. And he wants his fruit to be manifested in our lives, which is love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Amen. And how many know you all lose this when you go step into Walmart? Amen. Uh, I was hearing a, a businessman that, said that he, they got a phone call and there was a lady on the other side, you know, talking like a bad pirate and complaining and, you, you know, just asking them to do this and do that. Uh, they get to the house to offer the services that they provide in their business. And um, the first thing they notice is that um, she looks Pentecostal. And she's letting them have it. And um, it's not until they throw, throw her under the bus and say, well, hey, we're apostolic too. And then um, her countenance changed. Uh, we, we could have, you know, the outer conduct down pat. But if we're not displaying the godly fruit, uh, let, me, let me tell you something. People don't like Pentecostals already. Your family is already ready to criticize, or if they haven't, they're criticizing you right now because you're Pentecostal. All they're waiting for is uh, for your words and your actions not to match. And th this is the powerful thing about having godly fruit because uh, it is our testimony. They see God through us by our countenance and by our actions. And, and so it is our desire that all of us be fruitful and that we have the fruit of the Spirit. The, the second thing is that we must always have um, godly hunger. Amen. We, we must always hunger for God. That's why Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled. Hunger determines your life. The first thing the doctors will ask you if you're sick is, um, when's the last time you've eaten? Because if you don't have an appetite, there is a concern. And there is a concern in the house of God for those that are not spiritually hungry. Amen. Amen. That doesn't hunger for the word of the Lord. That doesn't hunger for, you know, the presence of God. There is a great concern for those that don't have spiritual hunger. Because spiritual hunger determines your spiritual life. Amen. And that's why we don't ever have formal altar calls. And we dim lights and we let you stay as long as you can. It's just letting you feed off your spiritual hunger. Because you never know what tomorrow has in store for you. Amen. So, uh, you, you know, spouse, it doesn't take rocket science. If your husband isn't praying, if he's not reading the word of the Lord, you, you, get, you all got problems. It just have not manifested yet. Your wife's watching novellas and you have not seen her read the Bible, um, do a devotional. Uh, it's just by the grace of God that your marriage is staying together. But there's going to come a time that the, that the test is going to come. And it's going to prove how strong your foundation is. Amen. Amen. So hunger is important. The third thing is humility. Amen. To walk 
with humility. Blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. It is important that all of us walk with humility. Our kids do not have um, a problem with God. They don't have, you know, they don't struggle with their spiritual walk. What they, pro what they struggle with is parents that are prideful. Yeah. Parents that do not tell them they love them. Parents that do not compliment them. They struggle with parents that are always yelling at them. And then they come to church and they're all on fire for God. Now, there's an inconsistency. If we would all walk in humility, we would be amazed how strong our marriages would be and how strong our families would be if we walked in humility. Amen. I believe all of you have, uh, you know, a virtue of humility because you are by far the best congregation in the whole world. Amen. I would say. Uh, so there... We all have a virtue of humility because uh, I would have done left you if you were all crazy. <laughs> Amen. But, but you, you know, we, we thank God that God is constantly calling us to display his fruit, to hunger for him, and to walk in humility. And when we don't, then we got problems. And then God will use trials to start breaking us down. Till we become humble. And, and sorry to say, some of your husbands are so thick-headed. You just need to prepare. There's going to be trials for the rest of your lives. <laughs> Amen. Your wives, my Lord. Just get an umbrella and get some, you, you know, um, rain boots. Because if they do not allow God to do the work, God will have extended trials. He'll permit extended trials. Amen. So for us to be fruitful and to maintain spiritual hunger and walk in humility, God will take us through a process. Everybody say a process. And going through this process, we can look at a butterfly. You see, a butterfly in the beginning is not the cutest. The only thing we ever look at a caterpillar and say, oh, look at that. I want a caterpillar. Isn't that adorable? Right, what does a caterpillar do? It just munches all the time. It eats and eats and eats. Amen. It's fat. Just storing. And, and people are like, what in the world? Why does it just eat through leaves and eat leaves and leaves? It's because it's preparing itself for a change. We read the word of the Lord. It's called the Bible. We pray. We come to church and we get the most out of church because there is a time and we're all in it that God will take us through a process. Amen. And we got to get as much of God and as much of heaven and as much of this word into our system. Because sooner or later God is going to drop the curtain and then he's going to say, it's me and you. Amen. Amen. And it is through this private time that God starts breaking us and God starts working on us, not to kill us, but to form us. Isn't that amazing that trials and seasons of processes, they are not meant to kill us, but actually just to form us. Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're not going to die in your trial. It's just forming you. Amen. Remember Joseph, they put him in the pit. The pit couldn't kill him. Amen. It was just going to form him to where he was going to go next. It was now the Potiphar's house. The Potiphar's house, the, the accusation of his wife couldn't kill him. It just took him to a prison. By the time he got to the prison, he said, I've been through a pit and I've been through accusations. This is not going to kill me. you got to get to a point in life that you'll look back and say, where I'm at today isn't as bad as where God has brought me from. I'll get through this. I want to let you know, whatever you're going through right now, it's not going to kill you. You've been through something harder than this. You've been through something like this already. All you got to do is lift up your eyes and say, God, you're going to get the glory in all of this. And I'm going to praise you in the midst of a pit, in the midst of Potiphar's house, in the midst of prison. I'm going to find myself a blessing. 
That's the only way you're going to get through the process is you got to look around and find a blessing. Amen. I dare somebody for a moment, I don't care what you're going through. I don't care how big the problems are in your life. I don't care if you think you're going to die in this situation right now. You need to find a blessing. For the sake of your spirit, for the sake of your life, for the sake of your legacy, you can't give up now. You can't force yourself to die in the pit. you got grandchildren that need to tell the story of what grandma went through. But by the grace of God, she fought the devil hard and they made it. <laughs> I dare somebody for 30 seconds to praise God for your kids. I dare somebody to get up and say, whatever I'm going through, it does not compare to the blessings that are around the corner. Hallelujah. Come on, find a blessing. I don't care if you've been unemployed, you still got love handles. That means God's been good and you find it. Find a blessing. Amen. That's how we get through the toughest moments of our life is we find blessings. Amen. Not only do we find a blessing, we are a blessing. Amen. Because the curtain is closing. And now problems are coming in. God is starting to work in our life. Wasn't last Sunday powerful? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I had to go preach in the Bay Area that night. And I did not want to leave. Amen. I bet Brother Luciano had been another crazy guy. We could have camped out here. It was so powerful. Because God wants you changed. God doesn't want you just to have an experience with him. He wants you to change. And this is why he'll take you on a process. And nature teaches us. Science will teach us that you cannot interrupt a metamorphosis because that butterfly will die. If you cut up the cocoon to see what's going on in there and you go through all of the gunk that it has produced, let me tell you something, just to try to help out the butterfly, you're going to actually kill it. Because it is what is in the cocoon that is forming this butterfly to be as beautiful and elegant as it is. I, I, I remember hearing a, a story of a scientist that was going hiking. And as he was hiking, they were able to be in contact with a nest. And they saw a, an egg and it was getting ready to hatch, but it was the bird was having a hard time breaking um, the, the egg. And, and so they, they studied it, and it wasn't even, the beak wasn't even going through the, the egg shell. So the scientists looked at the egg and started cracking the, the egg open and, and saw the bird. And when the bird came out, within minutes, it died. Because... As the bird pecks to open up its egg, it's producing the blood flow to help it spread its wings to fly. Same thing with the butterfly in its metamorphosis. It is by nature producing some ugly moments just so that in a moment it can come out of its cocoon and, cocoon and it could flourish and it could fly. And this is the problem with many church folks is that they refuse to change because it's hard work. So you know what they'll do? They'll just go to the next church on the other side of the street. You, you know, I'll just make an excuse that I can't go to church today. You know what? I'll just find something to do. So I won't get to church during church hours. You know what we're doing? We're running away from change. Um, you know, we get so dependent on people, right? Constantly wanting people to help us out. Pray for me. 
You know, mention me in your prayer. Tell the pastor I can't make it to church. Let, let me tell you something. If you are always enabling somebody in their walk, walk in the Lord, they're never going to grow. And they're never going to flourish. As you keep on rescuing them, it's actually harming them. Amen. So, God wants us to change. Everybody say change. And the key to change is partnership. Everybody say partnership. That's what we preached about last week. And, and uh, the word of the Lord says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out. Everybody say work out. Your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you. Everybody say God works in me. Both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Amen. Amen. Everybody, let me see your muscles. Come on, flex it. You got muscles in there. God gave you muscles. The problem is you're not working it out. Amen. And the more you get your dumbbell and you start, you know, working out those biceps, let me tell you something, they start getting bigger. It's not that the dumbbells are giving you muscle. It's that it's just working out the muscles that you already have. Amen. And it's the same thing with the things of God. God has given you his spirit. God has given you the fruit of the spirit. God has given you hum humility. God has given you spiritual hunger. But it's all kinds of stuff that is surrounding that that hinders you from actually seeing the progress. And we come to church and we, ex the pa we expect the pastor to work things out for us. We expect the pastor to pray us to when God is saying, hey, bud, you need to do your part during the week. You need to do the hard things so that I can do the harder things. Amen. Amen. We must learn to cultivate our spiritual life. Everybody say, cultivate my spiritual life. Amen. Coming to church is cultivating our spiritual life. Reading the word of the Lord. Forgiving is cultivating our spiritual life. Just as a butterfly or bird is working through trying to get out of their environments, the first step to change is usually discomfort. My Lord, how many hate discomfort? Amen. We have to go to church again. I have to give an offering again. I got to pray. I got to say no to temptation. No one likes discomfort. But I want to let you know that discomfort is what's going to bring change. Because it's not until you get fed up being who you are. That's when you learn to be dependent on God. Amen. It's okay, it's okay if you're quiet. You're in the operation room today. You've been set up. Do you know that spiritual growth is not automatic? Amen. Julian, I can't believe you haven't grown. You should have been the size of your dad by now. Man, those little kids. Let me tell you something. You can't force him to grow on your pace. It takes time. It takes nurturing. It takes the right environment. Amen. And all of us are in different processes of growth. But our goal should be growing. All of us are not there yet, but we should all be in the process of growing. Some of us are in the cocoon. Some of us are eating up God's goodness and God's word because God's about to take you in a secret place with him so he can do a work in your life. Some of you, there's already a foot out of the egg. Come on, some of, some of you, there's already a, a, you know, a, a hand out of the situation. Some of you have already experienced what it is to go through the process and you are glorifying God because you're not the same. 
Amen. You're actually get, glad that nobody called you up, that, that nobody rescued you from this situation. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, we're all going to grow up. And one of the things that takes change from us in the privacy of our home, in the privacy of our life, is going to be how we choose our thoughts. We must choose our thoughts. You have the power to choose what you think. Amen. And if you're ever going to change, you're going to have to first change your thoughts. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Because change is a matter of choice. You got to choose that, you know what? I want to change. I don't care what I've been through. I don't care what I'm going through. I don't care what experiences I have. I have one power, and that is to change. I know there's a body of believers that are in this house that is saying, I'm here because I have to change. I want to change. It's a choice. We can't passively sit around doing nothing and expect to grow. We can't just come to the altar and then go home and do your stuff and do all your junk and go back and fornicate and go back to your little roommate that you're sleeping with. Let me tell you something. Once you leave this altar, you need to go do the hard things. You need to change in that cocoon and say, God, I don't want to be rescued. I don't want uh, somebody else uh, to rescue me from this situation. I need to do the hard things. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And that's what ticks us off because we think that Sunday for three hours is going to help us for the rest of the week. When God's saying, I'm just getting you like a caterpillar, feeding you, giving you the word, giving you my presence so that this week you can get into a secret place and you can start working things out. This is going to change. That is going to change. This thought no more. In the name of Jesus, I am becoming better through Christ. Amen. Amen. I told you a revival is coming to Modesto, to Apostolic Jubilee Center, that while we're shouting, while we're praising, we're deleting people off our cell phone, off our Facebook. We're getting our drugs, throwing up to the altar and say, enough is enough. I'm changing in the name of Jesus. Amen. I can't wait to hear, Pastor, my husband got rid of the lazy boy. Why? Because that's hindering him from his walk with God. My God, that's what you call revival. When Monday through Saturday, you can get into your secret place and you can say, this is changing by the authority of God's word. You're coming down in the name of Jesus. I said, no, I'm not going there. I'm not doing this. I'm not thinking like this. And then we get here on Sunday and we're just shouting and rejoicing because guess what? We made it. I wish I had somebody that said, I made it another week. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> if you want to change, you have to choose what you think about. Proverbs 4.23 says, be careful how you think, for your life is shaped by your thoughts. My word. If we are going to change our life, we have to change our thought patterns. Amen. We have to change our thought patterns. Right now, this moment, you, you need to delete some of your thought patterns that's going through your mind right now. Amen. Because I am more concerned as your pastor, not on the problems not on your addictions, not on your setbacks. I am more concerned on what you're thinking. Because you can be clean for 30 days, but once you get that thought pattern again, 
is going to take you back where God's delivered you from. If you do not change your thinking, guess what? You're not going to be able to, be able to change how you're acting. My word. I'm just so depressed. How are you doing, Mia? What, what, what's going on? I'm just so mad. Okay, wh wh why are you mad? I have so much anger. Well, okay, so, you know, I'm just so depressed. Uh, okay, Mia, why are you so depressed? Because I'm ugly. Because I don't got a boyfriend. <sighs> Hold on. Where's my KFC bucket? <laughs> see, see, you're grabbing your addiction already based off what you're feeling. Do you, do you see where we're going? I'm not concerned for happy hour. I'm concerned why you go to happy hour. <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> I'm not concerned how tight you, you wear. I'm, I'm, why do you do that? What are you thinking? Because you're thinking that, you know what? My dad never said, you're awesome. Man, look how beautiful you are. You, you would go to him with your little tiara. And you would come and, you know, and he would say, not right now, I'm working. Go, go, go play. Go, go. Go, go and use that Disneyland castle that I bought you. Hurry up, go, go. And you've always been shunned. So Brother Steve, wristle, because he's a good wrestler. You can't wrestle no more. So the moment you hear a wristle from somebody... It's not how you, why you dress the way you do. It's why you do it. And it goes back, way back. Why you do it? Because you want attention. And the more you think about your dad not being involved in your life and the things that happen in your life, the more you do what you're doing. And so today we need a revival, a rethinking. We need a revival saying, God, I need to get myself out of bad thinking and I need to start thinking on the goodness of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm not concerned why you do the things you're doing. I'm concerned. What leads you to do the things? What's leading you right now? Amen. A void of a father will cause you to go through a process with God so that he can remind you that he's your ultimate father. That you don't need to be rescued by anybody else but him. That he has you in his arms. Why don't you just lift up your hands right now. Everybody. That's it. Lift up your hands right now. Hallelujah. Uh, Brother Lonzo, I'm not concerned about... What we do on Sunday, you guys do it here on Sunday. Man, powerful. Amen. Amen. We are Pentecostal to the bone in demonstration with excitement. I'm more concerned with what you're thinking for the rest of the week. Because if you are always rescued, you, you know how you're rescued? You play the victim. You, you know who's our worst enemies, mom and dad? Mm-hmm. You know who's the, some of the worst people that enable us is mom and dad. You, you know why? Because it's just within our nature to rescue our children. Amen. Well, you don't know Pepito. You don't know what he went through. And, you know, he's just not unemployed and haven't had a job. And he's 46 years old, 59. You, you, you know... I mean, yes, I do wash his laundry, and he has breakfast, lunch, and the chilaquiles, and tortas, and enchiladas. It's just because you don't know. You don't know, Pepito, what he went through. 
But then when it comes to prayer meeting, you're like, pray for me. I have high blood pressure. I'm so stressed out. I'm... My son's driving me crazy. <laughs> Pastor, talk to him. And, and, and you know what you're doing? Is you're allowing God. You're not allowing God. God is saying, listen, whatever you went through, Whatever you went through as a child or going through, whatever addiction you have allowed in your life, whatever hangups you have allowed in my life, I have something that is greater yes. and more powerful to deliver you. It's called my blood. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Hey. And my blood wants to just wrap you and cover you and say, you know what? You're not defined by who you are and, and where you've been and, and what you did. Guess what? I have something more beautiful to you. It's called the future. It's called the destiny. And, and, and if you would just change, do your part, change your thinking, then guess what? I'll be able to help you for the rest. But, but you, know, you, know, you know what starts to happen? This is what we're doing right now. There's people that have come to the Lord, and the word of the Lord is separating you from people, from things. But then, here comes mom and dad. I mean, oh, no, you don't have to go through this. No, what's, come on, come on. No, shh, shh. Let's go home. Come on, come on. Let's go home. And then, again, because God is so gracious, we're here Sunday and say, come on, son. Come on, just learn to depend on me, me and you. Just have a relationship. Think on how much I love you, how infinite my love is for you, the grace that I have for you. Why don't you get your mind and, and put it in me? And you know what? Listen, listen, we're like, don't rescue me. I don't want to, I, I don't want to be addicted anymore. I don't want to be angry anymore. I, I, I don't want to be abusive anymore. And then there's always those little thoughts that come. Come on, bud, it's better just being a victim. You can get out of every situation. Your, your wife will forgive you more if you play the victim card. You know, your dad wasn't here for you, and, and you went through all of this. If you would just play the victim, then guess what? You'll always be able to get out of situations that comes in your life. And guess what? Thoughts will come and rescue us. You know why? Because they'll take us to places where we want to go. And you know what's the problem is that when we are so dependent on our thoughts, we don't even know where, where to discern reality from fantasy. And it's because we're being rescued all the time. And it's not until the boss says, you're fired. It's not until your wife says, I'm out the door. It's not until your husband says, it's over. It's not until, you, you know, the collections start calling you and you're like, oh my goodness, wh where did I get myself into? It all begins with your thinking pattern. Change begins with your thinking. And God cannot get into your thoughts on his own. You have to let him in. I want you to lift up your hands right now. God is speaking to somebody. Romans 12, 2 says, to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Not, not real power, by the renewing of your mind. Not, I can do this. I can break out. I can be a better person. No, it's your mind. Change it. Come on, change it. This is the power of praying in the Holy Ghost. It's a communication with you and God. You lay out your life, your problem. God, I'm so hurt that he walked out on me. I'm so hurt that they abused me. I'm so hurt that, you know, my boss, he, he played favorites. I'm so hurt. And let me tell you something. As you start praying in the Holy Ghost and you start changing your life and your thoughts and say, you know what? Even though they tried to use it 
against me, God, I know you're working in my favor. Even though my husband shattered my heart, even though my wife shattered my heart, God, I believe that right now you're putting it back together piece by piece. And I rely on you. And I'm thinking right now God is doing a, I wish I had somebody to just go, God is doing a work in me right now. God is turning what God, what the enemy thought was for evil for my good. That's the only way you're going to get out of your pit. That's the only way you're going to stay in your cocoon. When I'm done, when God is done with me, I'm going to be beautiful. I'm going to be wiser. I'm going to be more victorious. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost right now. That's why you're struggling right now. I wonder what's on TV tonight. I can't wait to go eat. Let me tell you something. Applebee's can't deliver you. Your boyfriend can't deliver you. NBC cannot deliver you. The only thing that can deliver you is Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You better be all in here. Amen. Israel, he's so good looking. Right? Maria Contrello, he, she's right, right now, she's, she's not even the Holy Ghost. She's looking at Israel. Oh, yeah. And then you wonder why you battle with lustful things. You wonder why the world is more powerful. It's not what you're doing. It's what's leading you there. And it's always the thoughts. And you know, one of the biggest problems is that we want to be rescued by somebody else. You know, if I would just find a good man, he could just take me out. Let me tell you something. Marriage does not deliver you from your problems. It just enhances your problems. It just magnifies your problems. You know why? Because you're cool living by yourself and nobody knows how psycho you are until they live with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you're looking for, ooh, I can't wait to get a man because I'm going to be rescued. Let me tell you something. He's going to dump your little fanny. And then you're back again. Oh, if I only had a man, if I only had a girlfriend. You're trying to find something to rescue from the process. And we can never experience change if things rescue us. Why, why do people do drugs? They just want to feel disconnected to the pain that they're experiencing. And guess what? That pain is so deep that it just doesn't take one experience. It becomes a pricey price tag. So it's not the drugs, it's the thoughts that are leading you to your addictions. So it's not, the, it's not the lies, it's what's leading you to the lies. And most of the times it's some traumatic experience that got you so con disconnected from reality. Because if you knew you were in reality as a child, it is a horrible situation. What has happened to your life? So if you could just say disconnected to life and connected to lies, then you're better off. And I want to let you know, God wants to do a work in your life. Because as much and as you try to run away. It's going to come back. You could put it in the calendar. That that feeling doesn't come right now. I guarantee you, August 13th, August 15th, I don't know. It's, it's a cycle. It's going to come back. The cravings, the addictions, the, the depression, the anxiety. You know, if you're dealing with anxiety... I want to give you something, and you might think, well, pastor's thick skin, but I want to let you know it's the biggest word of wisdom for those that 
um, battle anxiety. And you know what it is? It's you're not going to die. Amen. Come on, sweetie. You're not going to die. You'll, you'll make it. Come on. You, we can get through the mall. <laughs> Nobody's ever died going through the mall. But things, you can do it. It's a thought, oh my gosh, if people, oh, there's so many people, oh my, and then all of a sudden it just starts working you up. It's the thoughts. And before he comes, you got to say, no! God has given me peace that passeth all understanding. I can do all things through Christ. I'm going to get through this mall. I'm going to get through this restaurant. I'm not going to be fidgety. I'm not going to be nervous. I'm not going to try to throw up in the name of Jesus. Come on, body, respond to my thoughts in the name of Jesus. You are not going to die, but you will live, and you will be a testimony. You need to speak to your emotions until your emotions light up to the word of God. Amen. I'm such an idiot. I'm like the worst husband on the face of the earth. Can't do anything. I have like the worst job ever. My kids are whacked. They don't even listen to me. And that's why you need something cold. That's why you can't break out of it. Because then, oh, you feel relaxed. You feel better. Ooh. My wife, all she does is complain. She never has the house ready. She's gaining weight by the day. <laughs> She's all yaks. Talks too much. Hey, but Delilah, what's up, girl? How you doing, huh? Man, you don't even know Delilah. <laughs> Amen. You're willing to know that Delilah is much better than your wife because of the thoughts. Because... She's, th your thoughts are taking you to Delilah. Oh. Is God speaking to somebody here today? Amen. You, know, you, you see, it's not the KFC bucket. It, it's not the happy hour. It, 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 it's not the drugs. It, it's not the antidepressant pills. It, it, it's not, you know, the holes in the wall. That, that is the ultimate concern. It's, it's right here. It's what leads you to do that. Yeah. It's, it's what's leading you right now to be vulnerable in certain situations of your life. It's not even a holiness thing. It's not even an AJC thing. It's not even a Pastor Gary thing. It, it, it's right here. Point to your mind. Your biggest struggle is right here. Amen. You're thinking yourself into depression. You're thinking yourself into insecurity. You're thinking yourself into vulnerability that you need somebody else to rescue you from where you are right now. And the way we think determines the way we, free, we feel. And the way we feel determines the way we act. You know, I just hate my mom. She gets on my nerves. So intrusive. Not my mom, but I'm acting. My mom's like, I love you, mom. You're awesome. And then as, as you feed your why you don't like your mom or your dad or your boss or somebody, then you wonder why you're so resentful towards them. Amen. Because could you imagine if you just, could just trade it, turn it around and say, you know what? Man, they did me wrong. And you know, and my mom, you know, my mom left and traded me for him? Really? And my dad walked out on this? But God, you know, I believe you have a plan in all this. I believe that you're working it out and you have the only, you're the only one that has the power to work out a bad situation for my good. And the only good thing is two things. Number one is that you can turn it around. And number two, hey, I think I'm, I think I'm good. 
I think I'm doing, doing a good father. I think I'm being a good church member. I think I'm being a good co. Could you imagine if you start speaking life into every situation instead of negativity to positive? You know what? My wife does this, or my husband does, but you know what? I made a vow to them till death do us part. Whether we're rich or poor, while we're sick or, we, you know, while we're healthy. So you know what, God? I have the power to love them. You know what, God? Adam didn't choose Eve. You gave Eve to her. So you know what? I'm not even trying to look for a spouse. I'm trusting in you. I'm believing that you're going to give me a good spell. And when you start changing the way you think, you're able to make better decisions. And God has given you power not just to do this. God just didn't have, give you power so you can do this. God has given you power so you can change your thinking. That's why he comes into this world. He says, repent. Change your thinking because the kingdom of God has arrived. And it's not what you think it is. If you would change your thinking, let me tell you something. You could change how you're responding right now. I wish I had somebody to clap your hands. I wish I had somebody to shout and say, I'm getting out of this pit. I'm going to stay in this cocoon. And I'm trusting that God is doing a work in my life. My, 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 somebody say, I'm not moving anywhere. God's doing the work. Whether I'm on parole, whether I'm on probation, whether I'm broke, wherever I'm in, I know that God has a work right here. 30 seconds. I wish somebody would dance in your cocoon. I wish you would just dance in the secret place where you are with you and God. You only know what you're doing. You only know what you're facing. You only know what temptation comes in the middle of the night. But right here, you got to say, God, I trust. You're doing the work in my life. And you're not done until it is completely finished. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, please excuse me, because I'm about to shout, not where I'm at, not where I've been, but where God is taking me. Because I have a choice in every situation. Greater is he that is in me. Drugs, I got power over you. Depression, I got power over you. Anger, I got power over you. Stubbornness, I got power over you. Listen, I don't know if you know how to throw a party, but us Aguiris, we know how to throw a party. I dare somebody to have a party all by yourself. I dare somebody to praise God because wherever you're at, God is with you and he's doing the work on your behalf. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. Right now, I'm going to give this whole congregation. We have the authority to break every chain, bring down every opposition in the name of Jesus. And I want everybody to dance through depression, break away every addiction. Say, in the name of Jesus, not on my clock, not on my time. I'm coming out, I'm coming out when God says so. But while I'm here, in the name of Jesus, I'm having myself the best party.
10 seconds think this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad in it God you've been good to me even when I wasn't good to you you've been faithful to me even when I failed God today you see my future for you know the plans that you have for me and I want you to demonstrate what you are That's it. Let God do the work. Let God do the work. And you just praise God that He's doing the work. And when it's done, it's going to be awesome. Somebody shout with the voice of triumph. Somebody shout with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am who God says I am. And he has a plan for my life. The change begins with you. Everybody raise your hands. I end with this. Psalms chapter 1 says, Blessed is the man. Everybody say, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. You know what David is saying? Listen, I don't get my information from just anybody. What David says is that my information is not with people that don't know God or that is negative or that is encouraging me to stay and get out of my situation without God finishing the work. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. If you do not fall in love with this and if you don't get this in your system, you will always struggle. Your true liberation is when you get the word of God inside of you and you start repeating it and you start living it. And it says your delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Who are you listening to? Who are you listening to right now? Come on, bro. That's church stuff. Church stuff is crazy. Isn't it better out here? And you're like, no. No. <laughs> I'm empty. You're still married. Like, oh my gosh, that's like so 80s. And you're like, no. I have a choice of who I listen to. <laughs> Young people, if your parents tell you you're stupid, you're good for nothing, you're never going to amount to anything, let me tell you something. You have a choice of who you're going to listen to. Those negative words are the word of the Lord. My concern is not what you're doing. My concern is what's leading you to do the things that you're doing. What's leading you to? While we're shouting here, you're like, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. And all the, what, what? Really? Right here? Right now? You just stole my water. You, you told brother George brother George I'll buy 80 pieces 
pieces of 80 pizzas. You write out a check and it's bounced. What is leading you to that? You'll never have an adventure of a lifetime if you do not change your thinking. I'm just so depressed. I gotta, I gotta, I just gotta pop them. I just gotta, why, why? What's leading you to that? What are you thinking that is leading you to that vulnerability? Because God has given you power. And God has taken all of us to a place of seclusion. So he can start working in your life. He that abideth under the shadow of the Almost High. I wonder if there'd be at least a hundred people that said, don't rescue me. I need God to finish the work in my life. I'm believing with mothers and fathers here today that your child, this is not a seasonal thing. This is not just I'm in for two months and I'm out. I believe this is a lifetime commitment. Serving God is a lifetime commitment. And when they change their thinking, when we don't enable them, let me tell you something. We're going to see them grow and flourish in the house of the Lord. You got to stand back and say, God, I trust you with my children. I trust you with their relationships. I trust you right now. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I want everybody just to lift up your hands. I know it's in your instinct to come and rescue. I know it's in your instinct right now to run away from problems. But God wants to do a work. I want you to come right now. I want, it. I want as many people to come right now and say, I'm leaving this place of feasting. And I'm coming to the secret place. Just me and God. Just me and God. I want you to come to this altar right now. I want you just to come. And I want you just to lift up your hands. You're not going to find it. That's it. People don't know what to give up. I look at Christians in America culture and just be, I can't give up clubbing. I can't give up these, some of these things in, the, in this world. I could serve God and do this. And I look at Muslim countries that Christians are being killed. And I look at a bunch of sissies that half-heartedly are committed to God. When's the last time you said I'm all in? Thoughts, actions. When's the last time you said, you know what? 90 days. I'm challenging this whole congregation. I'm challenging visitors. You come for 90 days. You get involved 90. You listen to Christian music 90 days. You pray 90 days. You listen to the Word of God. You read the Word of God 90 days. You have good thinking patterns for 90 days. And then after 90 days, you tell me. Tell me. Not, well, I think, you know, this whole church. No, no. You, you, you be all in 90 days, and then you come and give me a report. None of this just Sunday and doing your thing and doing your own thinking patterns. 90 days, giving it all to God, fighting every bad thought. I am beautiful. I am wonderfully made. God has a plan for me. I am his workmanship. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am a royal priesthood. I am a chosen generation. He's called me out of darkness. He's called me out of things that I don't want to go back to. And if he's called me, it's because he has a plan for my life. 90 days. Come on, let's go on this adventure. All in 90 days. All in. Fighting and resisting. 
That's it, 90 days. 90 days. Come on, mom. Come on, single parent moms. Come on, single parent dads. 90 days. No boyfriends. No looking through the numbers for a date. 90 days. Sunday's the Lord's Day. And we're going to get to the house of the Lord. Tomorrow morning, you're going to say, man, you know what? I have things. I can't, keep, I can't go to sleep with thinking horrible things that have happened in my life. But then you got to turn it around and say, God's working it out. I can't change my past, but I can change the direction and where I'm going right now. That's it. This is your thinking pattern that draws you away from it. 90 days. I want you just to lift up your hands. Come on. If you could be in prayer on Tuesday, you need to get here. If you can't, Tuesday, right there, wherever you're at, you pray. 90 days. Some of you can't get jobs and you've been beating yourself up. I want to let you know, God, just remind you, the economy is hard. He's working it out for you. It does not reflect your self-esteem right now. Somebody needs that word right now. There's somebody that your father walked out on you. They didn't walk out on you. They walked out on themselves. And unfortunately, you were offended and you were affected by it. But it wasn't you. You need to remind yourself, it wasn't me. I didn't, I didn't cause the divorce. I didn't cause them to walk out on me. To disown me. God's using it to prepare me. To be something great for God. That's it. Raise your hands. Everybody, shout There is healing in this house. I don't care what your misdemeanor, what your felony, I don't care what your addictions are right now. 
God is so merciful. He's reaching out to you and saying, come with me. Come up. Come up yonder. Love me. Love my words. Don't take every information as fact. That's it. That's it. Shate ya rabo ko yo rabo sha. That's it. Shate ya rabo ko yo rabo sha. Oh, rabo shate ya rabo ko yo. Hallelujah. Rabo shate ya rabo ko yo rabo sha. To raise your hand and just receive the love of God right now. Receive the plans of God. From this point on, right now, God is restarting lives. God is starting over lives. Hallelujah. That's it. What makes me completely vulnerable?
Robert came to our, our, our church a couple of weeks ago and came just so hungry. Yeah, I remember Sister Veronica coming and then her aunt and her grandpa, grandma, and this beautiful family that is up here now believers in Jesus Christ. Amen. Now her cousin has decided to give life to the Lord, Brother Robert, and he's been at our life group, faithful, him and his wife, and his beautiful two daughters, and today is a big day for him, amen, amen. I, uh, I, I loved it, because um, I've heard some people tell me, and it's the same story without telling them, they said, I mean, we prayed for Robert, but, you know, out of, maybe out of the ten, maybe, I doesn't seem interested to go to church. Let me tell you something. When God calls you, Amen. He, he chooses the least to do something great for the kingdom of God. I'm going to invite Robert to come down and we're going to, today's a new day for him. Robert Polito in the name of Jesus, for the remission of his sins, amen, God's going to fill him with the gift of the Holy Ghost, and his name's going to be written in the, in the Lamb's book of life, eternal life, <laughs> and may the plan for Robert come into fruition, and may he continue to impact this community and do something great for the kingdom of God.
to say something. He has the, just the Holy Ghost is all over him. He's, he's going to do powerful things for the kingdom of God. You have anything to say, Robert? I want to thank my family that I got here. I love my family, man. Especially my wife. If you have not been baptized, this is the great day to just take that step and just say, you know what, I want to do it. I want to make some changes in my life, and this is a great way to start. It's through Jesus Christ accepting Jesus. Is there anybody here today, you just raise your hand. We'd love to give you, a, baptize you in the name of Jesus or give you a Bible study about Jesus Christ. Anybody here today? Amen. In Jesus, God bless you. Peace of God go with you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus.